Hello everyone, I'm Felipe Hoffa, a Google Cloud Developer Advocate, and my job is to share with you the most interesting data sets I know and the Google Cloud tools that you can use to explore them. Today I'm here with Dr. Alexander Passant, a PhD in Computer Science and Semantic Web, and he has been analyzing and discovering music for the last years in his blog. What's that, that title? Appasant.net, that's my personal blog where I regularly publish about music tech and data science. Yes, and Alexander uh, recently published this book, Music Tech, from where he has the best articles from his blog. Uh, check it out. And today we're going to talk about that. How he has been researching music, discovering music, looking at different data sets. So thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell me more. Can you tell me more how you got started in music, where you're looking at sure. it? Sure. Yeah. So um, I've been doing my PhD in computer science and semantic web. So for the past five seven years maybe, I was working on ways to make data on the web smarter so we can use that more easily for discovery, personalization, recommendations, and so on. Um, and my, I'm also a big music fan, um, playing music, collecting records. So I just decided to combine both and see what kind of insight we can get from uh, various kind of data on the web to, to build music discovery tools. So can you tell me more about why music, what you're doing with it? Sure. Um, so I've been doing a PhD, as you said, in computer science and mm -hmm. semantic web. So during my PhD and afterwards, um, my goal was to find ways to, to make data on the web smarter um, so that we can use that for uh, personalization, recommendation, discovery, and so on. Um, and I'm also a big music fan, uh, collecting records, playing music. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to merge both and see what we can learn from um, data about music on the web, whether it's uh, acoustic properties mm -hmm. uh, of a song or it's how people share data or write about data and music and Wikipedia or Twitter or YouTube. Yeah, so you're working with very interesting data sets. Well, what data sets have you been yeah, using? Yeah, so I've been using lots of different things uh, from uh, how people edit pages on Wikipedia mm -hmm. to how people share music on YouTube, for instance, as well as different uh, data set playlists or things like uh, using music API to learn about the tempo of a song or the acoustic properties like the loudness and, and these kind of things. And so, how big are these data sets? Um, that varies. For instance, the one use case that we'll talk about, I was using 500,000 playlists. Uh, another one, I'm using uh, uh, lots of uh, different edits for mm -hmm. Wikipedia, 300 million edits from Wikipedia. So that varies a lot. The Twitter one is in real time. Mm -hmm. So I'm also trying to combine kind of static data and real time uh, data for this. Cool. And so we will get into this sample soon. Uh, I want to know what tools are you using for... Yeah, so most of the tools... Um, well, I'm using Python for mm -hmm. all the experiments first in terms of language. And then what I'm trying to do as well in, in all these things is um, try to use as much as possible cloud-based architectures and APIs. Um, just because as well, one of my goals is to showcase how we can do all these things without necessarily having to set up your own uh, clusters of machine that will do things from... Uh, big data analysis to mm -hmm. machine learning and so on. So uh, in that particular um, use case, I'm using uh, BigQuery a lot, mm -hmm. uh, just because it's really easy to set up. It's easy to put data, whether you want to put big dumps of data or if you want to put streaming data. Um, it's also very fast and very cost effective. Uh, so that's very nice tool when you want to analyze data. Uh, if you know SQL and just want to do SQL on large data sets. Yes, it is. So one of the examples you have on the book is how to look at similar artists mm -hmm. based on Wikipedia data? Yes. How are you doing that? Yeah, so the idea mm -hmm. was uh, if you look at Wikipedia that generally used um, to extract information about the, the, the content, mm -hmm. like you have a page about an artist and from there uh, you can learn the genre to play, you can learn the influences and so on. So they want to do something different and look at how people edit Wikipedia pages mm -hmm. and see from those edits if we can infer correlations. So. Uh, if you use Amazon, if you buy stuff on Amazon, you have these things. People who bought that also bought this. And the idea was to do something similar with Wikipedia edits. So people who edit this page also edit that one and see if you can find relations between mm -hmm. artists based on the way people edit pages. I see. So you're looking at people that edited this page also edited these yes. other artists. Exactly. Excellent. So can we take a look at this example? Sure. Yes. So um, for that, I'm using the public Wikipedia edits data sets, which is mm -hmm. one of the data sets you, you're sharing with the, the with BigQuery. That, that's yep. a public data set. So anyone can run a similar experiment. Um, and if you look at the data sets, you'll see that for every uh, Wikipedia edits, so we have the title and the ID of the page, 
uh, and you have also the contributor ID. So um, that's what we need to run the, that use case because when you have this information, uh, you can find that people who edited a particular page also edited another one. And that's how we, we, we were building that first use case. So let me get the query from there mm -hmm. and I'll go in detail. How big is this data set? Uh, the data set is 300 uh, million rows, I think. Uh, Excellent. So, and paste the query run here. the query here. So, what that query does there, uh, I took the page of the clash, um, the band yes. there. And so, the clash is number 30, 40. Yeah, so that's the ID of the page in Wikipedia. So, mm -hmm. every page got an ID, and mm -hmm. the ID won't change over time. Um, so, you can use the ID to make those, those kind of queries. So, that subquery there will find all the people mm. that contributed to that page. Um, I'm excluding the bots there uh, just because we want to, yes. to get real edits. And I'm also excluding minor contributions, which can be just people fixing a comma or a typo. Uh, mm -hmm. And there from that list, I'm getting uh, simply all the other pages uh, that those people have edited. And, so counting, and, ranking, and, count, them and by ranking them by the number of edits. Okay. So uh, let's run that and see what we have. So. Perfect. That query uh -huh. uh, is very fast. It was in the cache, but uh, we'll see later with other query. It takes only five or six seconds to pass this um, 300 million yeah. words. So in the results here, we're getting Ontario, Hamilton. I yeah, so we have why. very strange things. Because uh, in a way, they're kind of mainstream. So you'll see that people also edit uh, pages that have nothing to do with them, like Elvis Presley or Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're getting music. music yeah, we're still getting music, enough. like music. There we have mm -hmm. relevant things like the Sex Pistols, the Ramones, which are uh, which you can find actually in a, um, in, a in a in a radio station. Like if you take a radio on maybe mm -hmm. Spotify or something, if you play the Clash, chances are high that at some stage you will have the Sex Pistols or the Ramones. And we have them here just because mm -hmm. on the way people edited the page. So we're immediately getting results. Yes. So, but let's take something maybe mm -hmm. a bit different. So, uh, what do we have there? Let's yes. go a few pages later. Um, let's take Motorhead for instance and see if we have other uh, Motorhead. Things. What artists, now we're going to look what artists are similar to Motorhead based, based on, on the, the way people uh, of edits. edits. And um, we haven't run that query yet, so we'll see how much time it takes without any, any cache. Excellent. Um, so we're so going running, over. Mm -hmm. yeah, a bit more than 300 million words. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it processes. Seven seconds. Yeah, seven yeah. seconds to process 14 yeah. gigabytes yeah. of data. That's not too bad. Look at the relationships. Uh, so oh, we're getting heavy yeah, metal music. Yeah, heavy metal music, uh, Van Allen, Guns N' Roses, uh, things that are not music, like mm -hmm. NASCAR, for instance. Um, one way you can filter that is using, for instance, an external mm -hmm. data set like Freebase mm -hmm. um, that will give us additional information about every page and we will know if a page is about a musician, about a movie and so on. Um, and actually, one of the things I've done with Twitter and YouTube, we're using that, so I mm -hmm. um, can show you that later. But like, if you just yeah. look at the music bands, you have like, yeah, Warcraft, Van Allen, Guns N' Roses. Um, We're getting interesting results yes, already. Yeah, there are still strange things, but that's, mm -hmm. in a way, um, start to converge and, um, mm -hmm. and makes things a bit more interesting. And then you jump to work with playlists. Yes. Yes, tell me more about this playlist. Yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. Deezer, the, the streaming music platform, they have an API where um, you can get information about artists, about the records and so on, but also mm -hmm. about the playlist. So what I've done there was to get from that API 500,000 playlists, Mm -hmm. um, and then put that into BigQuery uh, and start running analysis. So one of the nice thing there, um, and that's also a nice thing about BigQuery when you want to run uh, ETL pipeline or uh, data analysis, um, is that you can directly push JSON data into BigQuery as long as you write uh, a schema file. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have to do the ETL, you just push the JSON like, mm -hmm. in that case, like the one that was provided by Deezer, and just write a schema that say, well, in those, um, in those files, we'll have, uh, we'll have an artist and uh, a playlist will have a track or multiple tracks and every track will have an artist and mm -hmm. so on. So uh, yeah. that's, you just define the JSON schema and give that to BigQuery and they will create the, the tables and all the content for you. Yeah, so you downloaded half a million playlists yes. from Deezer exactly. and took this JSON data directly into BigQuery. Yes. Can we look at the table? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just to uh, see the structure. So we look, we have the data there. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's for a playlist. So a playlist got a rating, an ID. Um, you can have things like title, duration, yeah. and so on. And we'll see that for every playlist, we get a number of tracks. So those are records that can be repeated. And a track got some uh, 
artists. Every artist got an ID and um, uh, the track also got an album ID and so on and so on. So uh, mm-hmm. what's interesting is that um, that directly comes from, from the Deezer API. So let me show you. If you look at the Deezer playlist. original thing there. So that's the JSON that I use to translate the mm-hmm. JSON that comes from that from, from Deezer directly to BigQuery. So instead of running uh, an extraction on every result I got from the API to transfer transform their JSON into uh, um, a SQL query to push data in a database, uh, you just directly pass the JSON with that kind of... Uh, you see that schema. Yes, yeah, so the schema says what we've seen in the database. We have a rating and ID, and mm-hmm. then we have some tracks, and each track is a record that contains uh, a repeated number of artists and every artist also or every track can have an album and has a single title and so on. Yeah. And what can you do with this data now that you have yes. a half a million playlists from yeah. so a lot of people? Yeah, so you can do lots of things. So mm-hmm. the obvious one is just if you, for instance, uh, want to find what's popular or what's uh, what's most popular, you can do mm-hmm. simple, very simple count queries. So yeah. uh, that's simple, that's not very fun because there's no, no really uh, analytics. But what you can do is use a similar approach to what we've just seen with Wikipedia is to find um, similarities between artists. So uh, people that use that artist in a playlist, what are the other artists that they use? And in a sense, that means that um, if they put artists together, there's probably a similarity yeah. at least for people. And obviously, Let's um, the more, worries. yes. Uh-huh. So we'll take that one. So for instance, that just... Rihanna. Rihanna. So that just takes... I'll call the table there. Mm. find the artists that are similar to Rihanna based on the number of playlists they've been together. So uh, just joining the playlist together uh, with ID and make sure that the artists that you, um, to find other artists that have been included in playlists, included Rihanna. Let's look at what artists are similar to Rihanna based Based on on appearances on playlists. Exactly. So uh, once again, 500,000 playlists. Um, every playlist, I don't have the exact number, but, but between 10 and 50, 50, 50 tracks. Um, and that's what we have there. Uh, yeah. We think like Britney Spears, Beyonce, um, like Black Eyed Peas, David Guetta, and so on. So that's, uh, that's also kind of a way. And if you look, I've done something mm-hmm. as well to use that and compare to the uh, recommendation they give into um, existing streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. And you see as well, there's some overlap. So uh, even the sample is in a way relatively small compared to the, 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 the number of playlists that Spotify or Deezer can have in full, um, there are still some relevance there. Yeah, and in and very few seconds you can get yes, a, yeah, you can just, start clustering yeah. artists. See, that just take like six seconds for several hundred gigs of that. Nice. Um, but you can do also, um, so that one is artist mm-hmm. uh, to artist recommendations. Um, but we can do songs recommendations. Oh, you can go as deep as finding similar songs. Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's say, for and you can do more than that. You can do mm-hmm find similar songs, but if you want to make it that more fun, um, exclude the songs from the same artist. So let's say uh, mm-hmm. in that example there, uh, we'll take other faster, better, other better, faster, stronger from Daft Punk, okay. and we'll find all the other tracks that people play together with that one, excluding the Daft Punk tracks. So that might be a way, let's say if you want to build your own radio station, um, mm-hmm. you can just use that and say, well, this is the track I like, uh, this is that track from Daft Punk, uh, what should I listen to now but something different from Daft Punk? Um, so the same kind of query that finds that um, instead of finding um, yeah, artists that are together, I'm finding tracks that are correlated in the same playlist. From a different artists? Yeah, from different artists. So there I'm excluding uh, the artists, which is that there. That's the idea of Daft Punk in Deezer. Uh, and that's the idea of that track. So Perfect. running the query. Wow, that was fast. It was uh, catch. Yes, it was catch. But we have like a... Uh, things like David Guetta, Lauren Wolf, and so on, Bob Sinclair. Then there are things that are might be not in the same uh, musical genre, but you still have like very like Justice yeah. and other uh, French band playing as well. People are grouping them together. Yes, which which mm-hmm. which which makes sense if you if you think of it. Cool. So from one track, you are getting more recommendations, tracks from other artists, and looking at user generated data yes. from this playlist. And from our last example, I know you have worked with streaming data too, with things that are happening now. Yes. Uh, can you tell me more about that? Sure. Uh, so these two examples that we've seen are kind of static in the sense that we take a bunch of data that was um, dumped from a static period of time and pass that into BigQuery to run the analysis. 
Um, but I've used as well Twitter uh, mm -hmm. and the Twitter stream to find what are people sharing in, in almost real time and see from there if we can find from uh, from the Twitter firewalls, at least from the one we have from the API, which is a subset, but what are the top tracks for a given genre for the past 24 hours or 12 hours. So uh, songs that people are sharing now on yes, Twitter. Yes, and for that I'm using the songs that people share uh, using YouTube links. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason is that um, YouTube got this API where you can get additional data from Freebase. So mm -hmm. that means for every YouTube link that is shared on Twitter, um, I can get additional information about who is the artist and what is the general genre of the artist. So then you can find, um, give me the last uh, pop music or heavy metal music that has been shared uh, popularly in the past 12 hours. Nice. And you're uh, downloading, getting this data in real time from Twitter? Yes. Yes, I, I want to make a big call out here for our friends at Twitter. Uh, Ryan Choi at Twitter Developer Relations has published this project where you can collect your own tweets uh, using Google Computer Engine as you're doing now. Yeah. And you can run it for yourself, uh, look at GitHub, their GitHub to find this project. Um, so let, let's see, how, sure. what are you capturing right now? Yeah, so I can show for the, so I have an instance running right now, mm -hmm. which gets data from the from the firewalls. Um, so this is a machine on compute, Google yes, Compute Engine? Yes, Compute Engine, uh, fetching mm -hmm. the, the, the Twitter Stream API. Um, show it. So it's fetching right now. Uh, yeah. We have the tweets coming from the API. And each of these tweets is then, um, so the YouTube link is extracted, so it passed yes. to the YouTube API to get the Freebase IDs. So these uh, are tweets that mention YouTube? Yes, uh -huh. yeah, mention mm -hmm. YouTube links. So I, the link then is sent to the YouTube API to get the Freebase IDs. So mm -hmm. that's the entities that are contained in a video. So for a music video, generally, as the ID back, you have the Freebase ID of the artist and the Freebase ID of the track. Um, and then the second step is to call the Freebase API using mm. those IDs and to get more information about the artist. So in particular there um, to get their musical genre. Uh, so that's all done in real time because then one, I got that data back from Freebase. Uh, I'm sending that to BigQuery using the BigQuery Stream API. Uh, yeah. So that means that like the time between a tweet is published and the time it's in BigQuery um, is just a few, uh, less than a minute, definitely. Mm -hmm. so. so you take the tweet, the YouTube link, you enrich this data yes. with free based data. Exactly. What's the artist? What's yes, the, the genre? Uh, nice. Yeah, Can we look at the table sure. here? Uh -huh. Let's, let's leave that out. So, so that's the structure mm -hmm. of the table there. Uh, so like on the, these are use cases, um, um, passing JSON objects, so I'm flattening then the data. So we have a tweet there that contains, so that's all the information about the tweet, so the creation mm -hmm. date, the user, and so on. And then inside the tweet, there is uh, a YouTube video, uh, that have a title, a description, and this video has some topics, uh, and every topic got an ID and a type. So the type comes from Freebase mm -hmm. as well as the ID, but the type can be a uh, music genre or music artist, and that's how using the general, I'll, I'll, I'll want the query so we can... Uh, yes. um, what kind of information are you extracting, insights are you extracting from this yes, live data? One thing you can do mm. is to, let's say, well, we can <coughs> look at that together, but you can find uh, what are the popular uh, genres that mm -hmm. are published uh, during the past um, 24 or 12 hours, and then go deeper and look just at one particular genre uh, and see what's, what people post about that. So let's take that query there. So that query, and then that's interesting there because we see a combination of uh, Twitter information and Freebase. Mm -hmm. So we've just seen in the in the structure that we have some uh, um, Freebase types. So there I'm just finding uh, all types, uh, all instances of types, music genres, all the genres that mm -hmm. have been shared uh, in the past hour. Mm -hmm. but the last 24 hours. 24 hours. And then for each of them, uh, finding the number of videos and grouping that by the, the, the number of videos. So that query will give us um, kind of the most popular genres uh, <laughs> that have been extracted from the, from the data sets. Let's look at that. Again, so 12 gigabytes? Yeah. Less than three seconds? Less than three seconds. That's not good. So 
that's the number of videos there. Uh, we, we get the Freebase ID there? Yeah, so that's the Freebase mm -hmm. ID of the general. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the name and that's uh, what we have in our, in our sample. Yeah. Pop uh, music, hip hop music, yes. rock, so, acoustic, soundtracks. Right, so we can take mm -hmm. one for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take alternative rock there. And there I have the query. Oops. We're going to look at what are the most popular songs for a genre? Yes, for the past, uh, in that case, 24. So we'll take mm -hmm. alternative rock there. Alternative rock. And we'll find. We put the Freebase ID there. Freebase ID there. The Freebase ID can be either um, in the topic or the relevant topic, mm -hmm. because that's the way the YouTube API gives you back results. Um, that's in a way to find what is the primary topic and subtopics, but then I'm, I'm using the general for both. Uh, mm -hmm. And we'll see again two hours. 24 hours. Um, and that will be ranked as well by the number of tweets for a particular video. So that's not mm -hmm. uh, the number of tweets, that's the number of videos. So grouping um, by video numbers and not grouping by clicks. Once again, we still have this yeah, 1.5 <laughs> gigabytes in two seconds. Two seconds. Uh, and we have things like, uh, yeah, we've seen, yeah. we have Green Day, Radiohead. Green yes. Day, Radiohead. Nice. Um, so that's, um, that's the kind of thing that I've been uh, extracted from, from that stream, which is, again, not the full stream, but that gives an idea of the kind of data um, that you can do with the Twitter stream. Like, there are lots of, and lots of things that are shared there uh, on YouTube, uh, and then filtering only by music, and then passing that to, to Freebase, you can run that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and I know... You created a website. Yeah, there's a small um, <laughs> companion website that goes with that. Uh, that just show basically what are, during the past 24 hours, the 24 most popular genres, and for each of them, the 24 most popular tracks. Mm -hmm. um, so that's there, and you can filter by genres, so you can find like the last uh, electronic music tracks that have been shared during the 24 hours. Uh, you can come back to indie rock as well, like the Arctic Monkey, the Strokes, and so on. Uh, or whatever genre you want. Uh, nice. So that just, uh, ah. yeah, that taking the stream and then running the query uh, to, to... So there, mm -hmm. uh, what you see there is not uh, done in real time, but every mm -hmm. every few hours there's a cron tab. Uh, they just query BigQuery to, to prepare the JSON file and that's okay. that to, to the website. So in real time you are analyzing tweets and reading them yes. and discovering music through it. Yes. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, that's quite oh. fun. Yeah. That's what we have for today, I think. Uh, thank you, Alexander, for Thanks. coming. Uh, everyone, check his blog, check his book, and s subscribe to our, our channel to get more big data stories. Stay curious. From Dublin, Ireland, I'm Felipe Hoffa. Thanks.